Dear friends, colleagues and audience, it is my pleasure to wel welcome all of you to our side event in the context of this 15th conference of the state parties on the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. I am Carola Rubia, the Executive Director of Fundación Descubreme. Um, I have a, a brown hair, I'm wearing glasses and I'm wearing a brown dress. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of our work, Fundación Descubre is a Tilian foundation born 12 years ago with a focus on promoting the full inclusion of people with cognitive disabilities in all areas of human development in Chile and a Spanish speaker community. I am honored to be hosting alongside our president Catalina Salle this side event centered on the role of foundations and philanthropy in challenging times when it comes to disability inclusion. It is well known that as a global community we're starting to build back from a global pandemic while at the same time facing pressing challenges such as climate change and mi mi migration crisis. It, it is fair to say that these issues has had a profound effect in the global economy, labor markets around the world and disruptions to the transportation services and manufacturing industry, just to name a few. But what is the role of foundations in this scenario? Our work is aligned with one idea and its core, that foundations can become vehicles and tools to addressing and providing solutions for persons with disability and the issues they face, thus facilitating sustainable change. Therefore, it is our role as foundations to make sure that persons with disability are not left behind in these situations. And in, in this journey, we have had the pleasure of meeting like-minded organizations from all over the world with whom we can exchange ideas, collaborate and learn from each other. All of us making sure disability inclusion is a reality for many. It, uh, it is our pleasure today to come with some of these organizations, our very dear friends for, from various foundations, in order to highlight global good practices from all over the world centered on the inclusion of persons with disabilities in challenging times. I would like now to hand over to Michael Fenbeck, Director of Zero Project, global platform developed and implemented by the Esle Foundation in Austria, who will moderate this session. Thank you all once again for joining us today. Thank you so much, Carola, for this uh, wonderful introduction. Um, I'm, I'm glad and happy that uh, I can be the moderator of this session and thank you for giving me this role. Um, so here with me are uh, two um, outstanding foundations that have an important role uh, in their sphere and, and uh, also on a, a global level, one of the leading foundations without any any uh, doubt and any exaggeration. The way we're going to handle uh, this session and the, the way we proceed will be as follows. I'm first asking uh, Catalina Saye from uh, Fundación des Kuberme to give a brief overview of their current work. Then um, we will move on with, with Javier Guimes from uh, Grupo Social Once, who will uh, present the current uh, work and the status of development of uh, Fundación Once and, and Grupo Social uh, Once. I will then uh, hand over to myself and uh, uh, explain a little about, bit about the Esla Foundation and where the Zero Project is currently. Um, after these brief, let's say, five-minute presentations each, we will uh, focus on, on certain some press, pressing issues and questions uh, that we all have to deal with, uh, and we will engage in a, in a, in a discussion uh, before wrapping up uh, and ending uh, this session. Okay, then let, let's, uh, let's start it off. Um, uh, Catalina Seye, Catalina, uh, why don't you give us an, a, a brief intro on the, on, on Fundes on this Cooper May and, and your current uh, work and your current mission and investments? And please unmute. Yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Catalina Seye. I'm wearing glasses. I have brown hair and I'm wearing a white t shirt. Uh, I'm happy to be here today. I'm from Chile. And I'm very pleased to be with this two wonderful foundations talking about 
uh, all the work we do with, for, with, for, with and for people with disabilities. Uh, the school permit was found 12 years ago, and right now the work that we're doing mostly deals with inclusion in all the areas of, the, of people with disabilities, particularly due to the pandemic. What we're working on is the networking and giving information to people with disabilities. One of the things we found during the pandemic is that information was not reaching people. So not only the pandemic was bringing a lot of problems because people did not have access to health, did not have access to so many things, work, if, but mostly what was being more complicated is how to bring all this information to people who spoke Spanish, but also have different barriers. So what we did, and for that, it was very, very important to reach out to all our great and wonderful partners around the world, is to bring to all the Spanish speaking communities all the information and accessible information to them. Information that was trustworthy and information that they actually could reach. So that was one of the things that we actually worked incredibly hard on during these times. Also, we worked a lot during this couple of years in how to bring all our work into the new into into the new uh, into, into the new uh, sphere of social distancing in a sense why because now you couldn't go into into the in, into the workplace so a lot of what we did was to perform things that we were already thinking about things that we were all talking about things that um, the world was already going to, but in a sense, we were all already talking about going into the new. It, into, it, it's, it's funny because a lot of our strategy was already there, but this pandemic forced us to put a strong uh, impulse into it. So we implemented a lot of the remote working models, not only within ourselves, but with all the people and all the work we did with people with disabilities. So it's inter interesting because not all of the work we had already been doing with people with disabilities within our organization and with international co collaboration and in public policy all started being, I wouldn't say rushed because all of it had already its own strategy, but I would say it started being uh, more intentional and a lot more uh, faster and a lot more uh, stronger and in, in a more, uh, the word I'm looking for, it's, it started being more, um, how would it work? It, it started being more, um, we ha we had to push ourselves to make it make it stronger in a world where we hadn't been before. So it's it's very it's, it's very special how we had to work all that we had done before face to face, all that we had done before in a very in a, in a different way in a space where we hadn't been before, which is a space of only communications through an online world. So it's it's interesting because all of this we had done before, but not in this way. So we had to adapt very fast. We had to uh, do this without fear, with a lot of commitment, and with a lot of trust, both in our partners, both in the people we were reaching out to, and with a leap of faith in ourselves too, which is something uh, I'm very I'm very pleased that I think the teams and the people we were working with all created this trust and they all committed to do it. And I think we were very uh, successful in different ways, but also we gave all, 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 our, all ourselves and we were able to go through this period creating new methods, new methodologies, new ways of working. And I think that was very important. 
Thank you so much, Catalina, for this uh, very personal and and very open and 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 honest uh, uh, assessment of your of, of the current work of the uh, of this on this Kubrame. Uh, we will uh, after this first round of uh, of inter introducing our work, we will come back definitely to that and uh, and would like like definitely learn to like a little more and give it, maybe you give us some examples what that meant and uh, how this uh, on, on the ground affected also the. Uh, that the, the work of of this on this Kubrame. but now what to you, uh, Javier Javier Guimes from uh, Grupo Social Once. Um, what's your current uh, assessment of the of of and Once? Where 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 are you and where where, where you are heading with uh, this enormous uh, work that uh, that this whole group is doing? Thank you, Michael. Thank you to to you and Fundación Descubrime for inviting us also to to take part on this discussion. I mean, definitely, um, Once Foundation is the result of the process of creating a, a solidarity between the disability movement in Spain. Uh, it was created by Once. Once is a, a national organization of blind people in Spain that, you know, uh, they also manage a lottery system, which is social because all the earnings of this system goes directly for the social inclusion of persons with disabilities. Once Foundation is the result of this system and we are really very uh, devoted exclusively to the social inclusion of persons with disabilities in many different areas accessibility employment and other areas which are also important for them following what uh, catalina was mentioning obviously for us the impact of these uh, last years of pandemic really has created uh, and reinforced some of the essential uh, services um, promotion of services that we do as a foundation. We need to say that something which is very specific from Spain is that ONCE Foundation and all foundations as such are included inside what we call the social economy sector. Social economy sector is a group of uh, social enterprises, foundations, NGOs, uh, all different, uh, uh, for example, special centers for employment. All these typologies are included inside the social economy sector, which means 12% of the economy in Spain, of the GDP, which really means that it is a very important sector, economic sector in Spain. So when we have really um, understood from the, the last events, from the pandemic and from the different um, risk and crisis that we have followed after the pandemic, is that we really need to save the social sector for the impact of the different crises that we had in the past. The social sector in Spain and in many other countries is very fragile. I mean, the services for persons with disabilities, the needs of persons with disabilities are also very different. The digitalization of some services that really have followed after the impact of the pandemic really has requested for us to revise the way in which we also fund innovation in Spain in the area of services for persons with disabilities. I think it's very timely that we have this discussion because uh, the way in which we are developing new services, new types of assistance from the state and from the private sectors, even access also to some products, is being in a totally different way. And we need to adapt to these new ways, which are really creating, if we are not adapted, more exclusion of persons with disabilities. So definitely our foundation has focused on that from the main pillars of our action. One of them is accessibility. So definitely digital accessibility, how artificial intelligence, blockchain, different areas in which really uh, accessibility is touched by the new developments in the digitalization of the society, but also from the perspective of employment. Employment is requiring also new ways of, um, of getting engaged in the labor market. The companies also have adapted to new ways of employing persons uh, with and without disabilities. So we need to train also, and to find ways to make the trans, um, let's say, the transfer of the skills that we had before to the new skills that are required by the labor market. So in all those areas, we are really currently working and it is not easy, but we really need about um, international cooperation. We need initiatives like the Zero Project uh, that you um, you know quite well, Michael, in, in Austria uh, through the Zero Foundation, but also Fundación Descubre for the uh, Spanish-talking countries, we really need to find good and best practice that can be implemented also in Spain, and we are really 
um, thinking that this type of, of, of really of change of, of practice is so needed because we are facing new risks to which we are not really well prepared and well equipped. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much, uh, Javier, uh, for this uh, uh, quite 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 open and clear insight into the current focus areas of uh, of Fundus and Onsen and Grupo Social Onsen. And uh, uh, of course, um, representing the Zero Project, uh, I completely agree that uh, working with innovations, sharing innovations, working together is uh, is is what will all bring us forward. This brings me now to uh, moderating myself and introducing uh, my own uh, presentation uh, briefly. Um, so I'm going to speak a few minutes about uh, what we currently do as the Esla Foundation with the with, with the Zero Project. Before then, uh, handing back to the uh, to this uh, to this uh, great group and uh, and 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 sharing some uh, thoughts and some uh, some uh, current developments. So uh, the Zero Project uh, is a, a project initiated by the Esla Foundation in Austria, but now also joined uh, by uh, Fundis on this program where we have some. Uh, some great uh, corporations, uh, especially targeted towards uh, Latin America and the Spanish speaking uh, world. And we were really happy that the last Zero Project Latin America conference was also hosted on the ground in person by, by Fundas and Onsen in, in Madrid. And we had a, a, a great event there and also some great meetings and, and site visits. So uh, these, uh, these corporations, these, uh, uh, this working together is, is definitely happening. So uh, the Zero Project is, is about innovations. It's about uh, uh, finding, uh, exploring, uh, selecting outstanding innovative solutions and then connecting uh, them uh, with people that can use them, uh, that can bring them forward, that can be connected and that are willing to share, to inspire and, and work together and, and, and learn from each other. That's basically the mission of the, of the Zero Project uh, as we do it now for, uh, for some 10 years. Um, we have a very stringent research and selection process, uh, meaning uh, we have an, uh, a year um, that starts every year in, uh, in May and ends uh, in February, where we define a certain topic. This year it's independent living and political participation, uh, where we try to find the most outstanding innovations and, uh, and uh, continue in a, in a very defined way. ICT technology has become one of the areas that we focus on every year uh, and uh, the other uh, areas of, of our research are in a four year cycle. So this year, as mentioned, it's independent living and political participation. The other three areas are employment, uh, education and accessibility. In this past 10 years, we have re researched thousands of innovations from uh, almost uh, 150 countries in the world and we selected 700 something, 700 plus as well what we call uh, awardees of the Zero Project. Um, and uh, our job is, uh, as we define it, is uh, to give these people visibility to tell the stories uh, and uh, especially invite them to a flagship operation, which is the Zero Project Conference in February in the United Nations venue in Vienna. And this ends normally the cycle and we continue with, uh, with the, the research and communication cycle of, of the year after. So this is the core process and around that we have developed uh, several um, activities in, the, in these past years. I mentioned already Latin America cooperation with Fundación Descubreme. We have developed a database that's uh, online on zeroproject.org where you can search uh, these uh, innovations and these innovative solutions based on, on, on keywords, but you also find videos, pictures. So it's a, it's a full blown research base now open to everyone. We're trying to engage uh, with uh, uh, groups that can and want to use the uh, the, the network and uh, and the the data and the expertise that's in in this group that we have developed. So, for example, we have started what we call the ambassador circle. As just one example in Austria, where ambassadors from uh, countries that work close with the Zero Project are coming together regularly, also to share ideas, to share the call for nominations, um, and uh, also to create those communities that we all need to to, to foster. Uh, innovations to scale innovations to take innovations from one country and one geography to another. So um, I want to end my presentation with uh, um, pointing out again uh, that our call for in the, uh, yeah, nominations is currently out. We're focusing this year on innovations, uh, as mentioned, independent living, political participation and ICT. So if you 
work on an, on, on an outstanding project uh, that, for example, works on deinstitutionalization, on supported living, on early childhood intervention, on personal assistance, uh, on guardianship uh, models, on uh, rights-based inclusion approaches, but also uh, on political leadership, on, on voter education, access to justice. Please join us and, and uh, uh, check out zeroproject.org, uh, how to nominate a project. And if you don't, if it's not yourself, simply share the call. Uh, the call is still open for a, a few weeks. Uh, so uh, yeah, please do that because the Zero Project and this great network of organizations working together is only as good as those innovative solutions that uh, that we can uh, all work with. Yeah, so this ends my, my presentation of the Zero Project. So I'm changing my head uh, again uh, to uh, the moderator um, of, of the session. And uh, yeah, so Catalina, you mentioned already uh, how the pandemic uh, changed and affected your work. Uh, you said things were uh, already there, but you had to pick them up more quickly. You had you had and you could embrace them much more quickly than before. You mentioned already remote work and, and uh, your foundation is doing a lot on, 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 on supporting uh, inclusive employment. Anything else that you want to point out, how the pandemic changed your work, how projects were affected, uh, how your funding was uh, changed because of uh, this past uh, two or two and a half years. And then, Kavi, I'm going to follow up with you and ask you more the same question. Well, yes, um, for example, when we implemented ro uh, remote work uh, models, I think there's there's several things we had to consider. First, uh, we have to consider the well-being of the members of the institution and also the well-being of the people with disabilities you're working with. So we had to completely change the way we did all our workshops and all our training programs. You also had to consider uh, how to get the courses that we're doing. So we completely had to change the models of our courses. So the job placement, the training, the consulting, everything had to be changed. So we had to completely rebump all our models. We had to change the way we performed the models because you couldn't do it in line. We had to adjust everything and we had to do it really fast because despite the fact that, um, in a sense, the materials were not the same, the way you taught the courses were not the same, the people who had been to other courses with us did not necessarily adapt as easily to the same courses online. So you need to you needed to help them to readapt to the new version of the courses. Like even the teachers, you had to reteach them how to do these courses differently. So there was a whole period of adaptation, a whole period of rethinking how to shape the whole culture of who was being taught, of who was teaching, and even how we thought about the courses and how we would then convince the whole community that these courses were as meaningful and as important and as um, impactful as the courses we were teaching before. And to be, uh, and we were very happy with the results. And I think everyone, people with disabilities, people who then employed these people, the, the people with disabilities, and the, the the people who were teaching, everyone was very very happy with the results. But this meant that we had to take a very fast, a very adaptable, and a very uh, a much more uh, whole and, and a vision of the human being and of the process much more broader than I think the typical courses you had to take. Because now you had people, it's probably when, when you talk about uh, how schools manage to take, uh, I don't know, when I remember like my two year old trying to have a class be a Zoom, uh, how do you make this two year old uh, pay attention? Then how do you manage anyone pay attention to a Zoom class? Uh, it's complicated. Like even <laughs> you, when you have back to back meetings, one after one, it's it's very different. It's very complicated. Human beings are not to be seated in front of a computer for a whole day with no human contact. So there is a part of this that has a lot to do with how do you help humans connect with each other that we had to consider. And I think 
that was one of the reasons that we actually managed to make this courses work. We took a lot of care of the human aspect of everything. And I think the team also took care a lot of their own human part of their own human well-being. And I think that made a huge difference. It was not only about the work. And I think that was very important. Also, um, it was very important for, uh, for us, not only for the public facing part, but also on the private facing part. It's how we gave, and I know I mentioned this in the last question, um, how we were a trustworthy part partner for other institutions, for our government, for our the people with disabilities, for ourselves, as a as a trustworthy uh, information giving institution, whether it was for for people who uh, for uh, companies who were hiring people, pe companies who already had people working with them, how to go through the process of the pandemic when they had people hired and people with disabilities, how to help them, how to deal with COVID protocols, how to do the whole process. And I think actually having guides that gave actual accurate information, timely, timely, in, in a way that they could adapt fast, that they could do the work without having to suffer through it, I think was very helpful for everyone. Um, also, helping different public institutions and different in different contexts to adapt through uh, to, uh, to the pandemic for people with dis disabilities and help them go through the process and being a good partner in this situation also was I think very very important and well and then again and you mentioned it before having wonderful international partners and interact with them uh, getting great information from them being uh, good friends and allies and getting all this information out to the world and getting information from them and being able to compare, contrast, uh, get this out to the world, do uh, the conferences together. I think that also made a huge difference in what we could actually get out there and be helpful to others and make this all work. You mentioned the... Uh, and the... Thank you. Um, so you mentioned already a, a lot of, uh, of, of, of great insights. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, the, uh, the, the human aspect. You mentioned uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, need to adapt so quickly to the new technology. You mentioned to a, having to act fast, uh, having to work closer in different ways with, uh, with public institutions um, and the need for, for more cooperation and uh, outside the box thinking. So that were my takeaways. Uh, what do you, Javier, you also met already when it comes to the to the impact of the pandemic, you mentioned already uh, digitalization as a, as, a, as, a, as a challenge and, and as an opportunity and different ways to uh, how to look at employment uh, models and how to yeah, get people employed. Uh, uh, you might want to elaborate more on, on, on what you, what actually been done differently uh, by Fundación Onsen. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I, I would say we have we are doing three new things uh, or reinforcing things that we already were doing before but now they are really uh, gaining more momentum and visibility in the foundation first of all uh, we found out that some specific groups inside persons with disabilities were specifically more touched by pandemic and financial crisis that came afterwards so we have developed and we are developing new programs specifically targeting, first of all, women with disabilities, secondly, elderly people, and the third, which uh, we are still planning and we will do in the near future, is uh, children with disabilities. It doesn't mean that we were not working on them before, because we have been already working with, with these uh, communities already before the crisis and before the pandemic, but we, have, we found uh, the need to create and reinforce specific programs them. You will see now that I will move to the second part of, of what I think is the, the second maybe difference that I can highlight now in this new period. But definitely we did a lot of things for the three communities, but still we have found the need to create specific programs to reinforce them inside the big programs that we already managed for all persons with disabilities in the area of employment and accessibility. 
The second big area is we have identified some social problems that have been exacerbated by the crisis. For example, one of them is violence against women with disabilities. You know, this is something which is becoming really, or it is already a big social problem, and we need to reinforce specific activities against violence um, against persons, uh, women with disabilities. And we have, for example, employment programs which are specific for all those women that have suffered uh, violence against them by any other, let's say, actor, their um, husbands, uh, families, whatever. The second is loneliness. Spain, as in many other countries in Europe and in Asia, um, is one of the counties which really we are really having an, um, a process of becoming older. And we have really also problems which this process is bringing, which is very positive in general, but it also has a problem of uh, elderly people with disabilities which also suffer loneliness. So we need to face this also kind of pandemic of loneliness that we need to find ways to overcome, which is even more problematic when you are a person with disability. And the third one, Michael, that you have mentioned inside this is more, this, this big uh, social problems is the digitalization. Uh, I have already uh, spoken about it before. Is definitely the way in which social services, public services, um, all type of communication between companies and customers, really uh, all, in all that process the, the, of digitalization, we need to really try to find a good way for persons with disabilities. And the third part, and the last one, which I think is important to highlight, is the, um, the problem of funding. Um, the impact of the crisis and the pandemic had really a very severe uh, consequence in the capacity of the services of pers for persons with disabilities in Spain. We had um, but we will see what happened with the new context, but we still have now a very important new European funds which are being allowed for uh, preventing the worst uh, impacts of the crisis. So we are trying to learn and to train our partners on how to utilize this funding also for social purposes, because one of the main problems we could have is that it can be used for many economic sectors, but not for social economy. So we are really trying to empower ourselves and our partners to make sure that this also goes for the social economy sector, including foundations. And the second is we need to find new ways of funding because public funding and because fiscal problems are in the, in the horizon, we need to find also the mobilization of uh, private funding. So this requires new ways of funding social needs. And we are trying to also invest today and we are also um, uh, let's say, testing new mechanisms to mobilize private funding towards social needs and social services for persons with disabilities. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Javier, and uh, thank you for sharing this, uh, this very interesting insights on your new target uh, groups. As you mentioned, they were always there, but you're putting a stronger focus now on, on, on women, on the elderly, on children with disabilities, targeting violence against women, targeting loneliness and also um, the, the digitalization aspect of it. And uh, also mentioning the funding uh, pro funding uh, challenges, and this is what we, what, we, what will lead us to the lead us to the next question. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to share some thoughts on how uh, some insights or backgrounds on how the, the Zero Project uh, uh, had to work with uh, work and around the pandemic. Um, so, um, we are not or in a very limited uh, amount um, directly supporting uh, NGOs or uh, social businesses or people with disabilities directly. As you all know, we are more on this uh, research and, uh, and, and networking uh, side, and this is mainly our mission. Um, so um, what we learned from 2021 on uh, 2020 onwards was this kind of information sharing, uh, doing a research process uh, that's working and that even improved because people were even more spending time in front of the screens. And uh, so this kind of cooperation worked in the beginning. Also, the webinars were, were quite something uh, uh, yeah, interesting and, um, and uh, people used it. But 
core of our work is also this networking and uh, and matchmaking, bringing people together. Uh, and um, we organized a, a full blown virtual conference of the Zero Project uh, in uh, in 2021. And uh, uh, Catalina and, and Carola and her team did the same with the Zero Project Latin America conference. So a fully blown virtual conference, that, but to be uh, really, really candid about uh, experiences, it does not work without in-person uh, meetings. This uh, part of the mission that we all have when we work on on sharing innovations and sharing ideas and and and, and learning from each other and and bonding. Uh, this works only in um, in, uh, in in this in-person settings. And I know what I'm talking about here, and I know, also know what I'm saying. Um, and I know how difficult it is, for, especially for people with disabilities, to travel to conferences, to be there. Uh, what it takes for so many people to travel almost around the world uh, and uh, uh, having still all these obstacles and barriers on the way uh, and also within the conferences and also our conferences are not fully accessible. I'm perfectly aware of this. We are all on this journey, but still um, I think from the experience and we, we saw this in, in, in 2022 at our in-person conference in Vienna. So we had some 400 people there instead of 800, which, which we still had in, in 2020. These people, they embrace this opportunity to come together again, to sit together, to share again, to have their spirit in the room and to learn from each other and have their ideas together. This does not work in uh, in virtual spaces, at least uh, I didn't find any, any way to do that. So this is a challenge. Uh, I'm not saying that this is the only way. Uh, so we, I think this is a challenge for those organizations like uh, we all do uh, that also want to share and connect and uh, uh, and, and, and learn and, and encourage. Um, we have to find this, what is now called a hybrid model, which is a word I don't really like, but uh, still it's it's mostly used for make, making this mix of, uh, of this um, screen corporations and screen sharing like we're currently doing it here and the in-person meetings and the in-person events. So this, I think the the, the, the best solution is still out there. It, it has not been found, and we. But that's our learning. We have to find this way. It's a lot connected to to accessibility. It's a lot to creating accessible digital environments. It's a lot to creating accessible uh, learning materials. So there's a lot uh, that comes with that. But that's what we have learned. Uh, we cannot fully be digital, but we uh, we have to embrace it and work with it and find the best models of of making this uh, this uh, in person. Uh, connection to the to the to the to the virtual world, yeah. So that would be my main sharing about uh, what we are struggling with uh, as the Zero Project, and we have had a lot of thoughts and a lot of great ideas also for the for the next Zero Project conference. But that brings me to the future, uh, and uh, let me this time start with you, Javier, because you mentioned already uh, the, the the funding challenge that we all have to look for for additional funding. So that the, the almost closing question round is now. Uh, what does uh, what are your decisions? Uh, where, where are you putting your your investments and your focus currently? What fundings are you using to do what exactly? And what are your plans for this next uh, six to twelve months? Uh, you mentioned already this this focus areas, but uh, uh, you mentioned also also funding and uh, and the directions and what the, the strategies that you're that you're using. So, what, what are you focusing on in this next six six to twelve months? Thank you, Michael. Well, we, we are now um, in a moment uh, that it is a, a nice uh, moment in the way of we were thinking that we were going out of, of, of this uh, horrible financial crisis and the pandemic. Um, and definitely now when you see how are some of the indicators for employment and social inclusion in Spain for persons with disabilities, we are in a moment, but we can say it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's better than we had in the in the last two years. The problem we have is that for the near future, fortunately because of the war of Russia against Ukraine and uh, all the energy problems and supplies and the higher prices, we can foresee that uh, by the end of, of the year, we will have some macro social problems that will affect also persons with disabilities. I mean, for sure, uh, higher prices uh, will create some problems of poverty, uh, problems of competitivity in our companies will create problems in employment. Um, so all this type of, of also some restrictions in funding and investments 
will also interrupt some of the of the social changes that are currently been going on. So in many ways, uh, we foresee uh, at the end of the year that we will have to face some challenges, some challenges. And, and, and we are as a foundation getting ready for that. Considering that our starting point is better off than two years ago or one year and a half ago, so definitely we are stronger. Um, we have um, uh, solved some of the uh, weaknesses that we could find in some services that were provoked also by the crisis. So in many ways, um, the whole system is stronger than one year and a half, but the social problems that we will have to face by the end of the year will be also major ones. So um, we are very confident that uh, we will we'll need still in the case of Europe, for example, uh, European approaches for social development. We know that, for example, in the European Union, there will be new measures uh, to promote employment of persons with disabilities. There will be also new measures um, to create some facilities to move around the European Union, like the, the disability card. So we, we believe that we have to work also with international European perspective in order to make sure that uh, we can overcome in an easier way these social problems. But definitely, uh, our assessment is that we need to get ready for a big uh, social impact uh, from the point of view of, of financing, economic situation. Uh, but at the same time, we are stronger and better off than one year and a half ago. So we need to get ready for that, Mike. Thank you, Javier. Um... Unfortunately, I cannot disagree with this uh, not so optimistic picture that you're painting for these next uh, six to 12 months. And uh, we also see some really dark clouds on the, on the horizon when it comes to the overall social impact uh, of, of, of the war and everything else that's uh, currently uh, going on. Uh, what, you, what do you, Catalina, what's your forecast? What's your area of focus in these next uh, six to 12 months? Well, we'll continue working on what we've already built, but um, in general, the way we work in the school room is that we always question everything we've done and we always question our business model and we always question what we're doing. So for us, challenges are part of the road. We don't believe that there's not going to be a crisis. We never believe that there's not going to be a problem next month or next year. So when the problem comes, we, in a sense, we never know which problem is going to come, but we know a problem is going to come. <laughs> in a sense, we're always prepared for them. So for us, it's not, it's not a surprise. We're always saying a model is going to change, a law is going to change, uh, a business that we thought is, was going to be there, it's not going to be, because that's life. Life is always about changes. So we're always, we believe that our best strength is to be flexible, to be adaptable, and to always have a plan B and C and D. That's a little bit how we always think about our, our how we plan our years and our six months, in a sense. So, and I think the team at this point is kind of like bored of me saying this. <laughs> like you always need to have like at least three or four plans because something will go wrong because life is always like that. And if it doesn't go wrong, it might change. It doesn't necessarily go wrong because things, life always changes the way you want it. So as long as people are committed and as long as your team is strong and your team is, and your team is resilient and we all know what our north is and we have great partners, great allies, we have the right networks, we have, um, and we know that what we're doing, it's the right thing. I think we'll find a way. And probably because our context is a context where you can't really depend on public services, where you can't really depend on on uh, on a lot of funds from others. You have to really create your own funds in a sense. Uh, we always know that we have to be creating new revenue streams, new models, new. So we're always looking for the next thing and how we reinvent ourselves every single day. And I think that's what has kept us always looking for new ideas, new ventures, new friends, new allies, and 
we've been super lucky in that sense because there are always very good people around the world and around us who've helped us uh, look for the silver lining. So I think that's what made us, uh, despite everything, look for the good things, even when the moments are bad. Thank you, Catalina. Yeah, I think uh, with a with a, a South American and Chilean background, it's uh, it's uh, definitely a different uh, point of view from this uh, very Austrian, continental European embedded uh, view, where this uh, situation uh, with the disruptions uh, that come with the, the uh, Russian-Ukrainian war uh, are yeah, have not not been present in any way in this past year. So for us, this was a complete surprise. But I think the Latin America is, is different with. Uh, uh, yeah, political upheavals in one way or the other happening all the time. So we, I think we in Europe have to learn or relearn uh, that these uh, past uh, 50 years or whatever are not there forever, but this can, yeah, hopefully it's not there to stay, but it's a learning for, for us here. Um, so um, to give again our, our uh, thoughts for these next six or 12 months, so there's a lot of, uh, of things that we want and could uh, in theory, built on the Zero Project uh, as this uh, sharing and learning uh, network. There's one thing that we are working uh, also closely with uh, with uh, our friends and peers from Fundación Descubrime is finding uh, improved models of of scaling innovations that work in one country across country borders, so that they, that they can start in another in another country. That um, yeah sounds maybe it sounds trivial, but it's maybe one of the most exciting. Uh, challenges that we have in this area, uh, because scaling is is, is is a word that can mean it can have at least 30 different meanings. It can mean starting a own organization in another country. It can mean finding an implementation partner. It can mean putting something open source. It can mean influence poli policy makers. Uh, it can mean transfer the technology. So it can it mean social franchise models. Uh, and and I think at least tell me if you know something more than I do. But there's no real approach of of, uh, of classification of analysis which model should be used uh, to start it in another way it's also very much dependent on on the types of people on the development of the technology whether it's a, it's a technology or a social model uh, so there's so many things to consider um, and uh, we want to get more more uh, more uh, knowledge and more expertise and and getting two feet on the ground on on, on knowledge and expertise how to how these things work and how could, how we could uh, better understand these processes. We we did something together in these past years, uh, which we called the impact transfer model, where we um, accelerated models, where we give them uh, training, uh, background uh, knowledge, inf information. It really worked well, and this 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 uh, this accelerator worked really really well. But uh, at some point, the accelerator ended, and then what happens after the accelerator? Uh, so this was the, the challenge that we're currently working on. So we're trying to build a kind of impact transfer 2.0 model where uh, we're bringing organizations into the room of scaling already at the beginning uh, of the process of thinking who can scale to which country or to which geography or to uh, work with which partner and bringing in um, powers with, uh, not powers, people with uh, organizations with resources and connect them uh, to the to this innovative uh, idea right from the beginning and then try to find in a kind of matchmaking way who, who can work with whom and also if uh, if they work together that this partner can take them to the next stage after uh, after an accelerator ends. Uh, so to give you one example, a foundation from one country whose mission is to take and, and, and get uh, innovative solutions from out of the country to their country, they, they are good partners because it's their mission to also work with with us and we're trying to build these bridges. It's not trivial, it's not easy, but this is the next step of, of accelerating to find these partners and working together on, on building stronger bridges from getting warm innovations from one country to another. So that's our next uh, thought and we are developing this together with uh, with uh, Carola Catalina and, and her team from uh, this Kubrame. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's see where where this takes us. So I hope at the next Zero Project Conference we can already share some, some learnings on how this is uh, uh, this is moving forward. This brings me to the to the to the last and closing round. Um, uh, Catalina, Javier, anything that you want to share with us that came to your mind while you heard the others speaking? Anything 
any closing words, not closing, but finalizing words for this session that you want to share with uh, with the audience. Uh, uh, highly welcome now. Uh, Catalina, maybe you start now. Well, uh, first, I wanted to say thank you to both of you. It's always wonderful to hear from our friends and allies uh, what your experience is and to learn from you. Uh, being a partner in both the Zero Project uh, and learning from Grupo Social Once has been not, it's, it's been not only interesting, but also we've learned a lot and we're very appreciative of all the opportunities and uh, it's it's one of the things that I think has helped us go through all all of this all of these times having that's why I say uh, during my, when I was answering like it's not only uh, partnerships they're also friends and there's also people who help you go through different moments it's when you see that working together makes a difference and um, going Michael work, working with you and your team it's been wonderful and we've learned so much and seeing the power of networks seeing the power of creating and giving information to people and bringing it bringing it to uh, to people who speak Spanish it's it's been really beautiful and it's been a uh, wonderful and one of the things I wanted to do is invite everyone to participate and invite everyone to actually uh, be part of it um, so that's one of the things I wanted to say and also I know that things sometimes seem because of the world we're living in seem that the next six months maybe two years sometimes seem a little bit bloom uh, but also it's in this strength of this network so we can find a lot of support a lot of Australians and a lot of ways to continue working and a lot of, uh, and a lot of support and a lot of uh, and a lot of future. So that's also the reaching out and to everyone who will be listening. Uh, that's what we're here for. So reach out and come to talk to us. That's that's what we're here for. So thank you for giving us the space. Catalina, and uh, I think we all agree that uh, leadership is, is definitely more important than ever in, in, in times like this. And I uh, can say that uh, you and your foundation are, are definitely but leadership is, 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 is overrated, but what you do is, is uh, and, and the whole foundation is, is leadership in, in, in your area. Uh, Javi, over to you for your final words. What has to be said, what has not been said so far? <laughs> no, no, I will actually take one of the ideas from Catalina to finalize myself. I think um, she has mentioned something which is critical. I think uh, partnerships are also the key part of the solution, not just partnership among foundations, which are very important. But I think we need to believe that foundations and third sector, we are just one part of the equation. We need governments and we need private sector. So we really need to build big alliances between the three types of actors that can really provoke change in our societies. So definitely, um, Today is a dialogue among foundations, and I'm very thankful uh, for you, Michael, and Fundación Descubreme for allowing us to discuss among ourselves on how we can really improve. We need to really create alliances with the others that are also part of the solution. And we need private sector, we need public sector, and we need ourselves. So I would like to build on that idea that was long, just uh, uh, mentioned before by Catalina, and I really believe it's, it's a critical one also for the future. And thank you again for the opportunity to discuss. Thank you, Javier. So um, while you were talking, I changed my closing words because uh, you definitely gave me a, a word that I would like to follow up. So the, I think um, when I'm saying as the ESL Foundation or this year project that, that cooperation is, uh, is, is is the future, it's not really surprising. Uh, so uh, what I think what's more not so obvious is uh, what you just said. Uh, these corporations intersectoral uh, 
and um, it's not always the same roles that uh, I think in when, when when I look at innovations, um, there there are different ways to work together, and it's not always so as uh, some uh, young entrepreneur developing something and then some funder funding this and then the government takes it over at some point. Uh, uh, you also need a government, and government can, can also be innovative. Government can give you a really innovative framework. So, uh, and and uh, uh, and NGOs can also be a sustainable factor behind it. So, I think that there's a lot more out there in in corporations uh, uh, to find out how how things really work and how we can better and and improve to work together. It's uh, it's also breaking up these pictures in your head about roles. I think there's also something important for the future uh, to to co-create uh, a more inclusive and uh, and accessible future for us for us all. That brings me to the closing of of, of these sessions. Uh, thank you all for uh, uh, for uh, uh, joining actively. Thank you all the participants for for staying with us and uh, uh, yeah, thank you all.